Hi everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce the key messages to our outlook for the second half of 2021. Over the next six to nine months, we expect global growth to experience a more mature phase. We do not fear any rapid and significant slowdown, as activity should remain strong, but simply anticipate data less extraordinary than experienced at the end of 2020 in China or in the second quarter in the US. The key factors for the extraordinary surge in demand, trade and production experienced over the past months are now behind us. What matters more than the pace of the global economy, however, is the fact that some key economic distortions that took place earlier this year will fade, with some even reversing. Rebalancing between demand and supply, between goods and services consumption, between Western imports and Chinese exports, will progressively put less pressure on commodity prices and inflation-related data. Against the backdrop of this more mature phase of the recovery, investors have also increasingly focused recently on the structural growth and inflation regimes that should prevail beyond the cyclical reflation. We believe here that the same disinflationary forces that have been at work are still well in place, in spite of some impressive recent or ongoing challenging developments. In particular, three hot topics have drawn increasingly scrutiny as potential game changers. Structurally higher public investments, lower participation to the US labor market, a generalized crackdown on US tech giants following the one experienced in China. We analyzed each of these topics and concluded that there was a low probability to experience dramatic changes in the trends that prevailed before the pandemic. A regime of relatively low growth and low inflation should therefore continue to characterize the landing zone for the global economy beyond the current recovery phase. How long will it take to transition to this landing zone? It all depends on the cockpit drivers. I mean, of course, the central banks. Their role will remain key in driving inflation expectations and preventing real interest rates from rising again or rising too fast. Fed officials have already started to ease the more hawkish guidance the FOMC provided during its June meeting. Recently, Jerome Powell insisted again on the very long delay the US labor market will need to recover from the pandemic. If the Fed confirms in late September its previous bending neglect stance relative to current inflation, then inflation expectations and long-term yields may rise again slightly, but 10-year Treasury yields will hardly exceed 1.5% on a persistent basis. On the other hand, any renewed communication hiccup from central US bankers will lead to the same kind of developments experienced in June. The People's Bank of China, the PBOC, also holds the keys of the current cycle. Since the end of 2020, the Chinese economy faced a headwind of tighter credit conditions and prudential regulations. With the slowdown in China's domestic economy, this hawkish bias has become more neutral and may even turn dovish before the end of this year. We see the cut in the required reserve ratio announced on 9 July as a first step in this direction. To conclude and summarize, we expect returns across assets to be more balanced compared to the first half of the year. Assets that benefited the most from the reflation boom, such as industrial commodities and potentially energy prices, may give back part of their past performances. While value and cyclical stocks may continue to enjoy positive returns, it will become increasingly difficult for them to outperform persistently. As the global economy transitions toward its previous low inflation regime, price makers should regain their past preeminence over cyclical price takers. This will favor companies participating in secular trends, such as tech and digitalization, or trends magnified by the developments in healthcare and environmental sectors. We believe it is premature to expose portfolios to emerging stocks. Most emerging economies will continue to suffer from low vaccination rates against the backdrop of new COVID-19 variants and from the deferred prospect of a significant US dollar depreciation given the Fed policy uncertainties. In the light of the recent PBOC decision, we re-initiated a limited exposure to China domestic stocks that we removed completely in early February. Finally, with a quieter treasury market than at the start of the year, 
credit should enjoy a much less adverse environment. We hope you found those recommendations both insightful and useful. For more details, do not hesitate to refer to our latest newsletter. Thank you.